Thank you for watching WISD TV and welcome to another edition of Know Your Schools. On this edition of Know Your Schools, we're going to talk about restorative discipline or restorative practices, something new in Waco ISD for the 2015-16 school year. I am pleased to be joined by Sherwin Patton. He is the program director for Life Anew Restorative Practices or Restorative Discipline. I have Trudy Bender. She is the coordinator of district behavior intervention. And then we have now in his second year at principal at GW Carver Middle School, Mr. Alonzo McAdoo. Thank you all, all three for joining me today. Uh, we're going to talk about restorative discipline and to get that started, we're gonna talk to an expert <laughs> on a restorative discipline. What is it? Well, restorative uh, practices or restorative discipline um, is a um, restorative way of dealing with, uh, with discipline in schools. Like for instance, um, the punitive model of, di of discipline that we've seen over the years has been suspensions or expulsions or um, placements in alternative learning centers. Um, when you look at restorative practices, what it gives us an opportunity to do is to repair the harm and do community building in the classroom in order to prevent um, some of those occurrences from happening. And, uh, and the intention is to help the students to develop socially and emotionally, and, and emotionally as well. Now, restorative discipline or restorative practices is gonna be new to Waco ISD, but it's certainly not new in other parts of the country. Let's talk about the history uh, of restorative practices. So in Texas, um, restorative practices is relatively new um, because in the past five uh, to 10 years, we've been looking at adopting restorative practices. Um, but if you look at the nation as a whole, um, for 20 plus years, there's been um, some states that have been practicing restorative uh, discipline. If you look at Minnesota, um, they've been doing some restorative practices in schools for a while in places like uh, California um, as well. Um, and then if you go back even further than that, um, they started restorative practices over 30 years ago in, uh, in New Zealand. And so uh, it's something that we know works. Uh, we've seen the, the outcomes. Um, it's just that we're adopting it now here in Texas. Uh, Trudy, you were instrumental in uh, bringing this to Waco ISD. What did you see in restorative discipline or restorative practices that really intrigued you? Well, a lot of our students um, that have discipline problems or behavior problems are excluded from school through suspension or placement at DAEP. And instead of really addressing the root of the behavior problem, many times these kids become even more disaffected with school. They're less connected to their school community, less connected with their teachers, and the, and the root of the problem is never really addressed. So restorative practices really are um, intentional about making a decision to connect that student further and use discipline as a teaching time so that you can actually get down to the bottom of what caused the problem. It may be that the student has something going on at home or that they have a problem with the teacher that needs to be addressed. The student needs a voice in the process as well and restorative discipline is something that brings the student's voice to the table as well as the adults. I'm going to mention that uh, restorative practices is going to be piloted at Carver Middle School and here at Waco High School. And Mr. McAdoo, what did you see? I mean, you've gone to a two day training. Are you excited about uh, what's coming to Carver? Yes, definitely. Uh, I'm excited about the fact that this gives the, the students on our campus the opportunity to have a voice and a liaison between us and administrative staff. I mean, it's going to incorporate uh, the parents, bringing them into the, into the whole picture, and not just making it a one-stop shop where you did this and you received this type of approach. Mm -hmm. This is about building kids to become better and getting them ready to uh, become productive citizens as they grow up, you know. Uh, Mr. Patton, Sherwin, uh, I attended a one-day training that you conducted here at Waco High School and got a little taste of it. Uh, we can't, of course, do a two-day training right here on this interview, but if you could, talk about some of the things that are key to making restorative practices work. Uh, it all begins with a circle or something. Talk about that. All right. Um, so we do use uh, restorative circles um, as a part of restorative practices. And what restorative circles um, give us, gives us an opportunity to do is to have intentional conversations and do what uh, Mr. McAdoo was just talking about. It creates a space where students can be heard and the adults as well. Um, and it also helps us to listen to other people. Um, it also helps us to establish uh, uh, healthy boundaries because as I'm listening to someone else talk, then I have to learn how to um, uh, allow them to speak without interruption. And so this is something that doesn't always happen. 
Um, the other thing that uh, I would say about um, restorative practices is that it's a perfect place for adults to uh, learn how to change our behavior because the behavior that changes first is typically the behavior of the adult because typically we like to make sure that we are heard and uh, we're not accustomed to allowing students to have a voice first. Uh, Trudy, really restorative uh, practices is not going to be quite as new to Waco ISD as at some other schools because we've had a grant in place for about four years now called Suspend Kids to School. And as a part of that, we've had peer mediation mm -hmm. and we've had Saturday Diversion School and even Student Court right. where things are worked out when a student misbehaves. So is, is restorative practices going to fit right in with what we're doing Absolutely. or enhance it? Absolutely. We already have many teachers that on a personal level and administrators that already do restorative things. When you sit down with a kid, you try to build that relationship and get to the bottom of what's going on, that's restorative. And Suspend Kids to School has the programs that you mentioned and also Safe School Ambassadors, uh, which tem attempts to build community within a school and keep the atmosphere positive. Um, those are programs that we can build on. They're already in place. Our kids that have been trained as peer mediators will be ideal participants in a circle. They already understand how to listen carefully um, and respond to each other. So uh, we really hope to build on what's already been in place in the last few years. Mr. McAdoo, I know on your campus, I don't need you to spit out any stats right now, but I know you, like all the principals, have students that go to ISS from time to time, and you may even have to suspend them for three days or whatever. They're missing valuable class time. Uh, this is something that I know that you're looking forward to. So talk about that aspect of reducing those numbers of suspensions and even the ISS, the in-school suspensions. Well, when you suspend a kid, whether it be ISS or, as you mentioned, suspending them to, to home, they're missing hours of instruction. And sometimes our kids get so many days out that they're so far behind the curriculum that it shuts them down. It makes them want to say, hey, I just, I just can't do it. I'm too far behind. And what does, that, what does that create? Another problem in the future. Well, restorative discipline, this is about taking that student, showing them the community that he has around him or she, to become better and let them know, hey, we're all on the same playing field with you. We're trying to get you to that goal of being successful. And I think that is a, something that we've already been trying to do in, in Wake ISD. And I think adding this in, we're definitely going to be on the right track. Mr. Patton, okay, I'm a 16-year-old kid, right? Mm -hmm. and I'm causing problems. Uh, I get sent to the office to see Mr. McAdoo or one of his assistant uh, principals. Uh, in the old, old way of doing things, you know, I got a, some sort of a write-up, uh, possibly put in ISS. What's different? What's going to happen to me if I repeatedly do some things that I'm not supposed to do in school? How are you going to get me back on the right track? Well, the old uh, retributive um, justice that we have in schools usually would ask um, what rule was broken, who broke it, and how do we punish that individual. In restorative practices what we're going to ask is what happened? Um, who was impacted by what has occurred? How were you impacted by what has occurred? And one of the other questions is so what do uh, what needs to be done in order to repair that harm? So typically in the old way of doing things then we would remove the person from the relationship in which they cause the harm. In uh, restorative, what we do is we create a space where each individual is responsible for repairing that harm. So they're learning conflict resolution. Um, they're also learning in the process that my actions really impact other people, so they're developing empathy. And then along the way, what's happening is I'm learning how to communicate better, because now I know how to use uh, um, my conversation. I can converse with somebody as a tool um, to solve in conflict versus using um, some type of physical violence. Now, you live in Austin right now? Are you from Austin? Uh, I'm a native Austinite. Native Austinite. I know that this is being used very effectively at Austin LBJ High School. Uh, have you seen students there or at other schools completely turn a 180 around from doing bad things to being a great citizen? Well, um, LBJ is just at the beginning point right now. Um, Martin Middle School, which is, which is uh, you know, what Mr. McAdoo is going to be working with, we've seen um, a lot of um, transformation that's happened on that campus. Uh, one of the things that we realized uh, uh, early on was that um, the truancy uh, on that campus went down a lot. 
um, they had a truancy court that used to be on that campus. And prior to uh, the laws changing, the truancy court was already removed because of the restorative practices on that campus. Um, they went from having a caseload of 15 students on the first day of school to only having two truancy is issues throughout the entire uh, school year. Um, they went from being the, the school that sent the highest number of, of kids um, to the Alternative Learning Center to one of the lowest in the district. Um, all as a result of, of not, you know, um, just keeping kids on campus just to keep them there. But actually kids were changing and they were changing because we were actually creating a space where they could be heard. And so um, what we use is circles of support and accountability, which helps to get um, the student, the parents, every service provider that this student has on the campus, whether that be a teacher, um, communities and schools or any other service that's offered, um, getting them in one circle so we can find out what the felt need is for the entire family and uh, begin to find solutions to, to problems, the root cause, as um, Trudy has just mentioned. You mentioned truancy there. So it's not just about behavior, it's about kids not being in school for whatever reason. Is one of the reasons that it improves truancy, it makes kids actually want to come to school? It gives students a sense of belonging. And a lot of times students feel like they don't belong at the school and especially when you have um, students that have uh, families where the infrastructure has been broken down. Um, and I mean, uh, what I mean by that is a father's not in the household. Um, you have a mother who's, who's working um, two jobs and who's not able to be there to uh, help the kid. Um, the student is actually helping to take care of other siblings. These types of students um, who have these unique challenges usually find a circle of influence that they can relate to. And sometimes that's not positive influence. So what we've done on the campus is we've made it okay to have healthy relationships with, with your peers. Trudy, how is this gonna be rolled out in the district? I know that we've had about 30 administrators go through a training process. It's going to be piloted at two of our schools, but how is the infrastructure of the program going to look at Waco ISD? Well, we want this to be really intentional. We wanna do it with fidelity, uh, make sure that we're using good practices and, and doing this well. What we don't wanna do is um, take away all the tools that teachers and administrators currently use until they're really comfortable using new tools. So it's not that suspension and disciplinary placement is all going to go away and all of that, but what we're going to do is start slowly building community in our schools using some restorative practices. So we'll start with staff members and with teachers that are interested. Um, we'll go with people that are already restorative minded or that are interested in building better community in the school and start with them. Um, we'll go with students, our safe school ambassadors and our peer mediators that are already interested in this and really work with those students to make sure that they're well trained. Um, one of the most important um, things that we're doing in Waco ISD to make sure that this is successful is hiring two full-time restorative discipline facilitators. This is such intensive work. It takes a ton of time and it doesn't just happen during the school day. Um, it happens after school, weekends, visiting homes, going to where the kids are. And so um, it takes somebody who has the dedicated time to do that. So both Waco High School and Carver Middle School have already hired full-time restorative discipline facilitators that'll be working on those campuses to put restorative practices in place. Alonzo, I know that uh, Mr. Love is excited about it being implemented here at Waco High, just as you are at Carver. We've been talking a lot about discipline in this restorative practices model, but it all comes back to turning performance, student performance around. It's built right in. Are you excited about what this may mean for the, the way your kids perform on, on uh, their subjects? Definitely. I, I truly believe that my students, by adding this to our campus and being a principal that believes in doing whatever it takes to make sure our kids are successful, that if they begin to make those academic gains that they're going to see, they're going to jump leaps and bounds into some of the things that they can achieve. And if it means we need to take in some extra time, get those parents there, whatever we need to do to see that get, that, get those gains, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, Sherwin. Uh, for the people watching at home, they may want to learn more about this practice. I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube if they, if they put in the search for restorative, restorative practices. Uh, is there any other places they need to go where they need to, if they want to find out more information? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to always push go to Life and News website. So, www.e is a network, 
life, L-I-F-E, a new, A-N-E-W dot com. Because um, there's some uh, good videos that are, that are on there and also some things that you can read up on. Um, the other thing that I would encourage um, people to do, um, Google restorative practices in schools because there's a ton of information that will come up. And uh, some of it, you know, you'll hear people who are um, skeptical about the process. But when you look at the data, the data supports the fact that this is just working. When it's implemented with fidelity, then it works. And the reason is, it's because people really don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so what we're doing is building relationships that matter. And this is for everyone that's on the campus. Very good. Time for a final word from our three panelists. Uh, we'll begin with our principal of uh, Carver Middle School. I know for me here in Restorative Discipline, I know for the 2015-16 school year, we're going to be able to do great things at Carver and along here I speak for Mr. Love at Waco High by implementing this with fidelity as you said we have to buy into it connect with people that buy into it and then we'll see the success take place. Mm -hmm. Trudy? Um, if behavior management were easy um, you know none we wouldn't be here today right it is not easy um, it's kind of a messy process it's really going to come down to one kid and you know, one adult at that school who's willing to build that relationship with a kid and to be really intentional about that. And um, that's to me what restorative practices are. They're a decision to include a child in community and do whatever it takes to give that child a connection. And Sherwin Patton, final word. Um, I would close with a word of encouragement for the entire community that's watching. Um, in doing restorative practices, it really takes the community around the school um, to be willing to uh, transform along with the school. So I just want to encourage people to get on board and find out what's going on inside Carver uh, Middle School and inside Waco High. And uh, be an advocate for restorative practices and find out where your place is in working with uh, the school administration. Very good. Sherwin Patton, Trudy Bender, and Alonzo McAdoo, thank you so much for joining us today for this edition of Know Your Schools. Thank you. Thank you. And it's called Restorative Practices Coming to Waco ISD for the 2015-16 school year. My name is Dale Caffey. I'll see you next time for another edition of Know Your Schools.